Hey guys, d Mike here for another episode of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. We made our way through Mount Cornet relatively unharmed. Professor Rowan wants us to go and check on Barry at Lake Acuity. Now, let's just take a moment and consider the circumstances of what we're dealing with here, okay? So, we were here. Well, first off, we were in Canada Life City, which is this one. We were at the library, and there was that big explosion, which you remember was the galactic bomb going off at Lake Verity. And I think, is that the one? Hold on. Lake... No, it was not Lake Verity, it was like whatever this one is. <laughs> I was trying to sound all cool and be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna criticize this game, and then I forget what everything is called. Anyway, um, Lake Valor. So they used the galactic bomb, blew it up, in the attempts to flush out the Pokemon, the legendary Pokemon that was there, and they were successful because they did say that they've caught all three of them. And then we're supposed to go and meet Professor Rowan and Don at Verity, which we do. That's where we fight Mars after we crush Saturn at Valor. And then he's like, okay, you need to go check up on Barry at Lake Acuity. Can you imagine just kind of the insanity of this professor and him and his assistant? Like, all right, we're gonna go to the easy one. You two are going to go to the crazy ones. First off, you're going to go to the one where terrorists are trying to hijack the local area and blow it up. And then we're going to send Barry through a mountain into the snowy tundra of the north. What? So either Professor Rowan is insane or a huge jerk. I don't know which, but uh, there aren't enough full heels in the world to deal with that kind of a burn. But speaking of burns, we got some trainers to fight. This episode is gonna be all about trainers, so hopefully you all are ready for this. At least there's gonna be a little bit of variety in this one, which is nice. Not gonna be quite so stock and boring with all the fights we've been dealing with lately. And I did mix up the team a little bit again just because I thought it'd be more fun to... I get some air time for the Pokemon that weren't around. We're getting kind of close to the point of the game where the final team is relatively intact. I won't say, oh boy. I won't say what it is yet. I want to keep you guys on the tip of your shoes. That's not a phrase. I want to keep you guessing. Wow, I'm doing great. Words are hard, words are hard. But anyway, hopefully you guys are all doing well. Starting to warm up in my area, which is really nice. I'm really appreciative of that. And lately, I found myself very fortunate in being able to acquire some good sales online on the internet. So I built the current PC that I'm using to record all this wonderful, lovely content for you all. Took me a little bit to do it. It was an investment, but you know, I also use it for work related things, which is great. Beyond that though, one of the things that I noticed is that Let's Plays, because I like to hold on to my content, are uh, kind of beefy. And the software that I have isn't really optimized for recording, unfortunately. It does have some pretty dense files. So to give you an idea of said files and their denseness, Usually when I record, I record for about a half an hour to 40 minutes, depending upon how many battles or how much I want to ramble and blabber. But that 30 minute recording is anywhere between eight to 16 gigs, which is a lot, especially considering that we're on part 29 now, I believe. So just do the math yourself. And so one of the things that I needed to do was invest in more space. I do have a hard drive, an external hard drive, that I back up all my projects on after I'm done with them. So all the Super Nintendo Sundays games that have been beaten already, those are those are done. So any game that gets beaten off, I put that on the drive and it lives there. I don't keep the raw recordings. I just typically live with the, uh, the rendered content just to save myself a little bit of space. But I still have all the, all the, all the renders, which is nice. So in the future, if I want to go back and cut together a compilation of buffoonery, which wouldn't be too hard because there's a lot of it. Oh, this lady's hair is wild. It looks like a wig. 
Um, I have it all, so that's very good. But it does eat up some some file space. I actually was in the process of moving some files because I did buy another hard drive, one for work, one for play, and the drive that I had that was for, I guess, you could call it working, whatever. The play is just kind of old projects or just helping people out, whatever, those types of videos. And I just needed to move some stuff around. I moved the Let's Play file into my new drive and that was like nearly a terabyte and a half of content. And I've only really been making content for the new channel since uh, a little bit past October. I think that's when this channel was born. So definitely getting up there and in, in size and space and everything like that. I just like to back everything up in the event that YouTube goes kaput and I still want to remember these things, especially when I get Alzheimer's someday and I won't be able to remember anything. Why not? So everything is going great. Everybody's getting level ups. This is wonderful. Uh, no, Screech kind of sucks. I'm not really a big fan of the debuff element. I feel like it's a bit of a waste. The best defense is a good offense. So why not? We can bring Buster back out. Nice. But yeah, I'm backing everything up. And then I went and got myself a new internal hard drive for my PC. So the PC that I built had to take it apart, which was actually pretty scary because I'm not much of a tech person. So I was just very happy that I was able to take it apart, put it back together. Everything works as it should. And now I have an additional terabyte of space. So for those of you who aren't big into computers and stuff like that, there's a thousand gigabytes in a terabyte. So it's about 10 gigabytes for every video. So I can record a hundred of those if it's just that much. So that's pretty exciting. Can back, back, back it up. And I will, I'm gonna hold on to everything. I don't know if I still have any of my old channel content lurking around there somewhere. I'm not entirely sure where I even stored it, to be honest. So I'd have to go and hunt for it. It's probably on my old computer, which I just found the other day is my laptop from college. I tried to pick, and pick it up and I imagine I could have murdered somebody with it. That's how heavy it was. It's a thick boy. Those old MacBooks, flex, were uh, pretty beefy, pretty thick. But anyway, we're here in the north part of Sinnoh. We're out trying to catch up to Barry, Sneasel is a Pokemon that was introduced in Generation 2, I think. It's a wonderful Pokemon. I'm actually gonna make a really poor choice here. No. Sneasel is Dark and Ice, which would be a very cool thing for Raymond to do. We'll see if Raymond is even quick enough or dense enough to hang in there from one attack from a Sneasel. I don't even know if it's fast enough to... Okay, so it's gonna taunt us. It's actually good. That's a waste of a turn. That's very good. And I'm not entirely sure how far into the north part of the game we're going to go today just because of who this could hurt. We're just a fighting type right now. We're not a steel type yet. Because of those of you who remember, Riolu evolves into Lucario sometime. I have no idea when. Oh, just about. We're actually going to get Raymond data there because everybody loves Raymond. I don't really need him kicking the bucket yet. I'm trying to mix up the little guys in some of the fights. I would like them to participate, get some good experience. This is probably going to hurt if it uses Icy Wind. It does not. But anyway, moral of the story from, moral of the story from what I was saying before. I'm very happy that I now have additional equipment to continue to make content for all y'alls. So I'm investing in this channel. I'm investing in all of you. Talk about a Let's Player who cares. Maybe in a few years I can show you my super dope streaming setup or whatever people do. I've seen streaming setups in the past where it's like, I have a, a computer with 100 and 700 million billion gigs of RAM and like this is my graphics card and this is my CPU and all this stuff. And then they're like, and then I also have a really crappy PC that I just used to run the stream. What? Was I? 
Did that person ask me that or did the game ask me that? Oh, <laughs> I thought that person was asking me if I wanted to use a repel. That was so confusing. Oh my goodness. I was like, I didn't know people could ask you if you wanted to use your items. Oh, I'm dumb. Wrong. Where there is Pokech, there is random gimmicks that people don't really need. We're going to keep chugging along here. I'm going to keep rambling. These are just battles as far as I'm concerned. I don't think we're going to get to the meat of where Barry is until probably the next episode, if I'm being 100% honest. But when am I not? Okay. Here at DMike Industries, we pride ourselves on always being honest, even if it's brutal honesty. All right. So... I know that Mr. Mime is different now. It used to be... Oh, that would be a bad choice. I don't know. Okay. Mr. Mime used to just be a psychic type. Also, show of hands. Mr. Mime's got two. So two hands. How creepy is Mr. Mime? Like, Mime Jr., not too bad. But Mr. Mime, terribly creepy. Terribly, terribly creepy. Ooh, that's not cool. This is a horrible matchup. Thanks for both getting buffets from the hail. I don't really know why of all the verbs. Okay, that's creepy. He's... What? We're breathing perfectly in sync. Why does that even matter? And also, how would you know? Are you like going up and rubbing your head on your Pokemon in the middle of a fight? I mean, I have a cat. And I do like to give her some good old pens until she starts purring and then I listen to her purring but I'm not gonna make be all weird and be like we're breathing in sync like I'm not gonna say that because that's weird stop being weird maybe that's like something lost in translation but I don't I don't care for it game freak I don't care for it you're being weird and I'm gonna call you out speaking of calling out one of the things that I'm considering doing I don't know if this is actually going to come to fruition anytime soon, but it always makes me laugh. So, uh, recently, I don't know if this is a spoiler for anybody, probably not, because if you have the internet, you should look it up, and if you haven't, well, I'm sorry. They just released information. There was a promotional video that was made by Game Freak about the upcoming Generation 9 Pokemon games, which are coming out in late 2022, so that's probably the Christmas season, if I had to guess. And, ooh, this could hurt. Hang in there, Craig. Yeah, defense. Defense. Clap, clap. Anyway. And, uh... Oh, bump off. Get out of here. You fool. But anyway. So I'm watching this video. And as soon as I finish watching this video, YouTube, when you look up stuff, it will auto-populate with a bunch of, you know, additional content. And it was like seven or eight videos and like mind you this information had come out the day that i was watching it i'd seen a post somewhere and i was like oh yeah 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 this sounds interesting i'm gonna look it up and uh we're gonna get rid of tackle for bite bite seems like a better move but as soon as i finished watching that video there were like seven or eight reaction videos to that information and they already all had like seven hundred thousand views a piece and it just gets me thinking, like, how on earth do people watch that content and then spin around and put that content out that quickly and then also have people watch it and it gets 700,000 views? It just blew my mind. And so I'm thinking, like, why don't I meant to use... I did not mean to use Rock Tomb, but it worked. Anyway, that's what I'm thinking. Maybe I do a D-Mic Reacts. Make a little a little side project so that way I can be like those people who give really gimmicky, over the top, totally legitimate reactions to new information. And it's always the same, the same thing where it's got a video of them with their hands on their face, where it's a video of them looking shocked at this new information. Like, mind you, maybe they are, maybe they're incredulous that a new Pokemon is coming out so soon. I kind of am, because I think it's a little bit too quick, but also, Side note, I love getting stuck in the snow, by the way. It's very cute. Anyway, uh, was there anything up on that bridge? I probably should go back and check it out before I get in too deep. Ha, anyway. But yeah, it just, those videos make me laugh because I know that the target audience is probably children. I hope it's children. Um, 
But man, like making content like that and then just like faking it, I would assume that those people to an extent probably have some element of authenticity of like actually being a little surprised or kind of shocked by the information. But let's be honest, like how much of it is just them playing it up, maybe them putting on a little bit of a face, which is kind of fun sometimes, but when you do it all the time, I feel like it's just a little, little hokey. And knowing me, I probably would be critical of it, but not in a good way. So I'm a little hesitant about the idea of me making a video about that, but who knows, maybe I will, maybe it'd be kind of fun. I'd love feedback on whether people would watch that. So maybe I'll do it, maybe I won't, no idea. But I think like those fake hokey reaction videos are just a little, a little sad, you know? People are like waiting for this information just so they can make a, a video about it for their YouTube. But in fairness, like this isn't my, this isn't my living. I don't do this for a living. It'd be cool if I did, but I don't yet, if at all. And so I don't really have the authority to say what people should and shouldn't do. I mean, if you're having fun, go for it. I think it's just a little goofy when they all look the same. They all follow the same gimmicks. It's like there's a rubric out there that says, if you want to make a reaction video, you need to look really dumb in your uh, in your YouTube thumbnail. Your YouTube thumbnail needs to be barely about what you're reacting to at all. If you could put a three to five pixel stroke white around your entire face, that'd be perfect. It's like there was a like there was a committee that got together and was like, you know what? If we're gonna make YouTube videos, we need to make sure that everybody is making them and looking stupid in the exact same way. Okay. So I was not actually intending to catch a Sneasel, but while I'm here, Sneasel itself is not a Pokemon that is a, uh, it's not a Sinnoh Pokemon. However, Sneasel does have an evolution that is. So spoilers. This is pretty exciting. We'll catch a Sneasel. Ooh, I'm not entirely sure if that's, I don't know. I mean, I guess I could technically use a wing attack. It, it would be ineffective against Sneasel. Sneasel is a ice type. Let's see what this does. Hope I don't knock it out. And I did. Great. I thought the ice type and the flying type would have gone against each other. Okay, so as much as I love knocking out wild Pokemon, nope, I don't want that scary face. That's kind of the game punishing me for being dumb. Waterfall, let's see what Waterfall is. So we're a uh, mostly a physical attacker here. And Waterfall, it's technically better than Surf. Yeah, you know what? Surf, well, hmm. We are a physical attacker. And I don't know if the, it, it seems like we're gonna break even. So I guess no. I also think it's interesting that we have the ability to learn HMs without being taught them. It's an interesting dynamic and I wasn't aware of it. Oh, okay, I guess I don't need to go this way. Actually, I wanna see if I can run into a Sneasel one more time. Okay, as I want to run into Pokemon, I can't. There we go. Wasn't expecting to run into one right away, but I guess I am. And that red thing on its head looks a little bit smaller than the last one, so I wonder if this is a different gender of a Sneasel? It's a female Sneasel? Okay. So I probably should have used... <laughs> it says right here that it's effective versus not very effective, so I'm an idiot. I could have used Assurance and I probably wouldn't have killed it. But that would be me using my brain, which is... You know, it's not something I need to do. It's something I choose to do. I have to remind myself to breathe in and out sometimes. Okay. So, you know what, you know what, you know what, I'm just going to throw an Ultra Ball at it and pray. Pray to Arceus. See if I can make it happen. Okay, great. Actually, I think it's nighttime, so I should be able to use Dusk Balls, which would be more effective. They're the nighttime variety of Ball du Jour, or Ball du Noir. Noir is not nighttime. <laughs> That's the color black. I meant to say Nui. Ball du Nui. Great. So we got a Sneasel. That's fun. Oh, it's dark ice. Okay, great. 
It feeds on eggs stolen from nests. Its sharply hooked claws rip vulnerable spots on prey. Terrifying, great. Okay. So uh, we got Sneasel. Sneasel's name will be... Um, hmm. I don't think we have a Suzanne. So Suzanne kind of sounds nice. And... Uh, you know what? Let's add Sneasel to the party. Who is doing okay? Craig's kind of useless in this area. I mean, Sneasel probably is too. Was not intending to have a Sneasel, so... Guys, you're welcome for that little surprise addition. Also, this kind of depth of field here, where things start to get a little out of focus the further away you go, is kind of a weird... Like, I know what they're going for, but it's not... The execution isn't great. So let's heal up one more time. So we put a beat down on Suzanne. We want her to be able to be in fighting shape. She's not going to be super useful, I'm imagining, as we continue to head north. I don't know... Okay, Meditite, I hate them with every fiber of my being. Just so you know, there are Meditite up here. Its head looks like an onion. Miguel's dozing off, must be sleepy. I can definitely relate. Feeling very tired. It's been a long day, guys. Lay off, okay? So here we go, route one, or two, so I can't read. And I believe that this area, you know, the fire that burns in your heart. Heart on fire. You want to go and start uh, lifting logs and training for your fight against Ivan Draga. But anyway. Oh, now is the, now is the time that I get rid of Craig and it would have been perfect to have. It's okay, we still, still got Grayson. Also, who doesn't love Raichu? What a great Pokemon, Raichu, you know? Alolan Raichu, regular Raichu, Lieutenant Surge's Raichu. Like, I love that episode where uh, Ash sends Pikachu out to fight Raichu after Pikachu gets kind of messed up and he's like, oh, Pikachu, do you want to evolve and be effective? And Pikachu's like, no. And then it still somehow winds up beating Raichu using that exact attack, actually. It, oh, and its cheeks light up, that's adorable. It uses agility, which I guess is supposed to be like, more than just, you know, a move that speeds you up somehow. And then Raichu is like using some crazy electrical attack and then Pichu's, or Pikachu is fine, I guess, because it stands on its tail or some BS like that. That's one of the things that's hilarious if you go back and watch the animate, animate, is like, they took a lot of liberties with it that don't really make a lot of sense. Like, not even just in the context of the game, but like, in the like real world but I guess the Pokemon world and maybe human world aren't the same I don't know but I do know that I want to use Grayson more because he's awesome Grayson is super strong and still has one more evolution to go which is very very exciting um you know what let's get Suzanne some action Hippopotas is is a ground type also, a Dusk Ball is a perfect choice for a Sneasel. So yeah, this is the base evolution. I'm gonna change the the hail to a Sandstorm, so we will be buffeted by the Sandstorm. That's kind of annoying. But thankfully, we at least know Icy Wind. I feel like I do have a... I feel like I do have a copy of, of Ice Beam. somewhere. Ooh, this is a bit of a double whammy here. That's one of these things that's really annoying, is there's these moves that trap you, kind of like Bind does. This is like a sand version of Bind. Which also makes me think back to that fight of Pikachu against Onyx. Which at least, like, the people who wrote the show were kind of being a little tongue-in-cheek when they had Pikachu defeat Onyx by way of hitting the sprinkler system, which I think is hilarious. But it also kind of like was unfair because it was it was an illegitimate win, I'd say. As much as Ash is probably an illegitimate child. Okay. So not so bad. That's some good experience for Suzanne. She does not want any more of the buffet. Ooh, a Pelipper. Haven't seen many Pelippers. 
Developer is the evolution of Wingle from Ruby and Sapphire with its weird split eye. I think we have seen one in here because I did make that exact comment last time. It's very goofy looking. Huge pelican. Pelicans are kind of scary. I don't know if any of you have ever seen a pelican, but you go to the beach, they're always out there dipping their big old beaks in the water trying to get a snake. That's what I understand. Also, you know it's very flattering to be called a snack by anybody. What a great, what a great way to feel. But if you say it, you gotta mean it. You can't just half-heartedly call someone a snack. Okay, so this is a huge open area, and I believe there's a bunch of people hiding in the snow. Hopefully not, because I don't want to have to try to chase them down. Great. I actually live in an area where I believe there are two of the uh, two cities in my area are two of the top 10 cloudiest places in the United States. So take your vitamin D pills, kids. And also sometimes the game doesn't tell you about whether or not your attacks are going to be useful, which I feel like is kind of a butt. Now would be a really good time to have Charlie around, but I don't, I feel like Snover is grass in ice, maybe? Okay, so the grass part is still very weak to flying, so that's very nice. Also, Snover, adorable. Its evolution, not so much, kind of terrifying. That's okay. Skier Madison, one and done. I like her blue hair and her pink outfit. Kind of a nice aesthetic. Also, we are very stuck in the snow, but we found a nugget! Sometimes when I pick my nose, I do too. Anyway, so... Yeah, being stuck in the snow is very adorable. Yes, there are, it does appear, people slash things hiding in the snow. Ninja boys. I do have a good eye spotting you. I spy with my brown eye, a ninja boy. Who Antonio has a lot of Pokemon. And he wants a beat down because I'm annoyed that I have to fight so many crappy Pokemon of his in his purple onesie. And then I still have to deal with... Uh, there's just so much to deal with. Playing this game is so stressful, everybody. I tell you what. And I wish that there was a way to make these battles more exciting. Like, I'm trying to mix up the team. I'm trying not to hit you with too many of them, but there's just... This game is full of them. And also, if you guys want me to finish that Sinnoh Dex, I gotta do them all. Every single heckin' one. That's not a joke, by the way. If you want to complete, I think there's 100 and, 140, 150 seen Pokemon. You don't have to catch them, mind you. You just have to see them. And I believe that uh, in order to do so, you have to see every Pokemon via battle. That's a good way to do it. That's the way that I would recommend doing it. You don't have to take my word for it, but it is what it is. So. Just something to think about. Also, multiple times now that I wish I had Craig and I don't. So how about some nuclear option here? Gonna take down this dumb Golbat. Ugh. Stop not being intimidated. Like, let me manipulate you. We're pretty scared. I mean, Luxray actually is kind of scary. I'm trying not to make a reference to it just because I do it every episode, but... In a certain open world Pokemon game, whenever I stumble upon a Luxray, it's a little intimidating. So I, I definitely get it with its Dragon Ball Z hair. It's a pretty intense Pokemon. And I feel like I like it a lot just because you can get a Shinx early in this game. It doesn't evolve too late. Like an early 30s evolution is pretty nice for an early Routemon, and then, you know, it gets some really good moves. It's got pretty decent stats. Any Pokemon that hovers around the high 400s, low 500s, pretty okay in my book. That's right, take that little boy. You just can't keep up. All right, let's ruin this ski and jerks time. Techniques you learned in school. If you pizza when you french fry, you're gonna have a bad time. Oh no, four Pokemon again, stop. Who is this for? Who needs this much experience? 
I'm just disappointed that whenever they have these battles that there's plenty of fights out here in the uh, in the old wilderness and in the wild wilderness but there's just not enough variety when like the fights actually matter like these ones are just kind of whatever like hit or miss but there are plenty of moments when it's like gym battles when there's just not there's not enough like in my opinion there's not enough variety especially like the uh i don't even know what his name is the the fight we had in cantilave byron what a horrible horrible gym his fight against him was fine he had a good mixture of pokemon but it's like they didn't even try they had so much time in between platinum and this game if they were going to remake this game i understand also, why does this guy have so many Snover? I understand that having a a spiritual successor or like a one-to-one -one re- I shouldn't say spiritual successor. A one-to-one -one recreation of a game is great. It definitely drives up nostalgia. Plus the quality of life enhancements is nice. There's post-game content, of course. All of that is great. But man, what a missed opportunity to not enhance the rosters of at least the gym trainers. Oh, nope. <laughs> cool, the fast on him. He's got three Snover and a Golduck. What a random team. This always makes me wonder. It's like, what's what's your team and why did you choose it? It's like, well, you know, I just really like Snover. Also, I have a Golduck. Just wanted to pull a fast one on you. Make sure you're still paying attention. And you're going to want to have some, some variety on your team, especially when you're going to be fighting the upcoming Elite Four? Elite Five? I mean, there's always the Elite Four plus the Champion. And all their teams are going to be themed by a certain type, usually. And they're not... I don't remember what they're like in this game, because I forget who does what. But it makes me think back to, like, other generations of, of teams. Like, for example, Gold and Silver in the Elite Four, there was Karen. What a Karen. And she, uh, she was the Dark type. Elite Four member, which I think is great, because they had Jasmine, who was the Steel-type gym leader, who, you know, wasn't great. A couple of Magnemites and a Steelix. How far up does this go? Oh, this guy's spinning. Look at him. Let's do it. He's got to be dizzy. We should be able to take him out pretty easily. But, uh, yeah, Karen, Dark-type gym leader. And her team barely had any dark types on it. I don't even know if it did. I think it had one, like, Houndoom or something like that. I don't know. At the very least, like, if you're going to have, like, a theme of some sort, like, I don't know, step your game up and don't have a Vile Plume if you're a dark gym leader. Like, I guess the sprite of Vile Plume is, like, dark colored, but that's obviously not what it means. So, I like that these episodes are just like 90% of me just complaining about games that are beloved by everybody. I'm sorry, everybody. Hopefully I'm not offending anybody. These are just my opinions, and if you can't handle them, you just gotta get out. No. I don't want... Actually, that would have been... I don't remember if Mean Look is the move. Quick Guard? What does this do? Never heard of this. Quick Guard. User protects... Oh, okay. That's dumb. Do not want. I want type diversity, but at the very least, if I'm going to be doing the kind of um, if I'm going to be doing the kind of work where I'm going to be having to, to go through these gauntlets of battles, at the very least, I want my Pokemon to have a variety of moves that are like good. All right, so we're not on Ice type yet. So let's see if Raymond can hang in there. You've got it, buddy. He is catching up in levels to everybody else, which is nice. We need to get him a better rock, or a fighting move. Rock Smash kind of sucks. That was actually a really good Rock Smash. Rock Smash. Do some Metal Claw. And it seems like our defense is hanging in there just enough, so. Thankfully, we should be able to get one more attack in. Take down 
Sneasel. Metal Claw is a great move. I remember thinking of Metal Claw brings me back to, uh, this is, this is what this game's all about, just me having random memories about Pokemon. Metal Claw, as we defeat Bjorn and his baby Bjorn, we, uh, we think back. We, I'm going to start speaking in third person like I'm a psychopath. Makes me think of Fire Red, Pokemon Fire Red, Leaf Green, that variety. The red and blue remakes. Is this a heal spot too, or do I have to go all the way back? Hello, sir. Ooh, we can get Rock Climb, nice. That's another one of those TMHMs, is this it? Okay, so he's a big old ding dong. Also, 100 TMs, holy smokes. I didn't know that that was a thing. But yeah, here you go. Rock climb, if you want to climb some rocks. Did we fight you yet? Hello, excuse me. Excuse me. No, we did not. Okay, so no one cares. Anyway, um, fire red, leaf green. What was I even saying? I totally forgot. What was I saying? I got so invested in making fun of people that I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, metal claw. Here we go. There it is. I got it back, everybody. You're welcome. So... It makes me think back to um, how, like, when you start that game, if you pick Charmander, like, Charmander historically is the weakest choice at the beginning, although it's the best choice. Charizard's my boy, but the reality is that your first two gems, if you're new to Pokemon, are a Rock Gym and a Water Gym, Brock and Misty, respectively. And it's a little tricky to now, oh boy. Nothing I have is great, okay. Let's go ahead and nuke him with Steven. I totally forgot that Meryl picks up a fairy subtype, which I don't quite understand. But the reality of my situation is that, uh, yeah, the, um, what? Okay. Is that Charmander is a bit of a rough go, but they mitigated that. Oh, thankfully Steven is relaxed. I'm not. I also like Steven's yellow and blue leggings. You get Metal Claw, like pretty early in that one. I think like within the first like five or so level. Oh, get out of here. It's just, uh, the little additions are just too weird for me, but you get Metal Claw so you can like easily, easily take down Brock. It's pretty darn nice. I don't really have any move that's good against Clefairy that Grayson has, but I can take the nuclear option. And unless we get Metronym to death, we don't want that. This episode is running a little long, so hopefully we can... Oh, it's not even... Oh my gosh. I totally forgot that it's... That fairy types are immune to dragon, which I think is absurd. But two bulldozers should be enough to take it down, I think. Oh, is this going to reduce my attack? Don't you do it. Ugh. But it should also be hit by the hail, so... You should only maybe be one more turn away. So yeah, it's immune to half of my attacks. What a jerk. Its speed is getting... Getting chop, chop, chop. Oh, no! Alright, so this Clefairy apparently is a tank. I'm gonna burn a turn and... Burn a turn. I do know that I think fairy types are weak to steel and poison. So we do have Sneasel and Raymond. Let's go ahead and get Suzanne out there. They're not, neither is doing, doing so hot. So here we go. We won't be buffeted by the hail, but we can scratch it up. We got two things with Metal Claw. See, it's perfect. It's perfect I'm talking about it because two Pokemon on the team. That's one third. That's 33%. And everybody's getting a little high in level. So I probably will want to swap some out here in a moment. Maybe not in this episode, but let me see if there's anything else exciting in the middle of this horrific snowdrift of an area. There's just so many fights. We fought you, Mr. Spinorama. Okay. 
Here's a little rest house. Can you heal me? No, but we can get a spell tag. Great. All right, episode. You're getting a little bit long in the years. I'm getting a little bit chilly, so I'm going to go warm up. Hopefully you guys enjoyed yourself. I've been D-Mike. This has been Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. I'll see y'all next time. Bye.